Hey, this is Dr. Buck Parker. I am a board-certified general surgeon, and in this video, we're going to talk about diverticulitis. Uh, a lot of people uh, always ask me, but what, what is diverticulitis? And a lot of patients come in, they have diverticulitis, and never heard of it, and they want to know what it is, and they're a little confused about things. So this uh, video, we're going to go over diverticulitis. All right, so definition. First of all, we're going to take a little, we'll do a little anatomy lesson, as usual. Okay, so this is, oh, you can't see that, eh, right there. So this is a crude drawing of the colon and the colon is the portion of the bowels the last portion of the bowels which basically let me draw this little thing here um, which moves the liquid stool which comes into here this is the small bowels goes into what we call the cecum and then it goes up the ascending colon across the transverse colon and down the descending colon along the sigmoid colon because it's shaped like an S and then out the rectum okay and that would be the anus down there so um, basically the colon removes a lot of water from the stool that comes in liquid here uh, this part here and then it's liquid and then it's the water gets removed some electrolytes get removed and then it becomes solid somewhere over here and then it goes out the infamous poop shoot that down there right so what happens in diverticulitis, have you ever have seen like a um, little inner tube and the inner tube gets a little weak spot in it, right? And you have a little blip, right? Oh, I'm going to draw right here, okay? So this is what happens. You see this little blip right here? Where, oh, where am I? Over there. So the wall of the colon basically gets a weak spot and you have like a little uh, out pouching, okay? A little bubble and that's a diverticula and diverticula with an a e is singular and diverticulum um, actually that's singular too uh, diverticulitis that's not singular anyway I don't know what it is um, multiple but anyway diverticula I think is maybe multiple I don't know anyway here we go so there's lots of them over here and generally they happen in the sigmoid colon like this sometimes it can happen in the ascending colon I'm going to talk about the ones here. We'll talk about the ones here in a second. So when these little things here, uh, they can happen. And generally, maybe you have some pain uh, for a short period of time. You have one of those things, the little blips um, develop. They can do nothing. They can just sit there all the time. And uh, you can never have any problems with them. Or what could happen is they get blocked. Okay, I'm going to put a little drawing here, my infamous little drawing here. See the neck of them or the base of those things? They're blocked off, okay? And what is in the colon besides poop? Bacteria. And so bacteria gets in these things and they get trapped and there's no place to go. So then bacteria does what they do best and proliferate, right? And then we have a little, a little thing there. Uh, the, um, the thing there, it bursts. Okay, or it gets it actually has micro perforations, and that is diverticulitis. Okay, um, ITS means inflammation, but uh, diverticulitis is when you have a diverticulum. The diverticulum by themselves are not um, infected; they can be be not infected, and then you can have a diverticulitis which is infected, and they can have just usually just one gets infected. Um, and you have micro perforations. And then we have like a little bit of a continuum where I talked about last time well, from, we'll say, diver. Let's see, we'll have micro. If I was good, I would have done this before. Perforation to gross rupture. And once again, we have a continuum, okay? Something like this. So we have, uh, where are we? Micro perforation. You can't even read that because I have terrible handwriting. And then on this little um, continuum here, we have gross perforation or gross rupture of the colon. So that would be where you just have a big old hole. Whoops. You just have a big old blowout. You know what I'm saying? You have a big blowout like that, and you just have stool spill into the abdomen. Bad news. If you couldn't, get, couldn't guess that. And then in the, in the meantime, we have um, maybe a little bit of spillage, but not a lot. 
and we can form what's called an abscess. Okay, an abscess is something like this, where um, you have the, the blow, you have a micro perforation like this, or a, a small blowout, and the body walls it off, and all this stuff in here is bacteria, and the bacteria gets caught in there, but the the body um, contains it, and it doesn't go everywhere. And so you can get uh, fevers and chills and get sick, but that is part of the continuum. Okay, I just want to do that little definition there, and then we'll talk about the symptoms and things. So, diverticulitis is basically an infection in the colon, but uh, after you have these uh, little diverticula and they get ruptured, um, you can have micro perforation. You can have a small, uh, like a slightly bigger perforation with abscess, or you can have gross rupture. And most of the time, you have this micro perforation. Um, which is treated with antibiotics, but I'll go over that in a second. So symptoms associated with uh, diverticulitis are pain, abdominal pain, and most of the time, so if I go like this, this is the left side and this is the right side, okay? So most of the diverticulitis happens on the left side. You can have it over here, it's just not very common, okay? You can have diverticula over here, they're less common, more, uh, mostly the diverticula over here bleed. Uh, so we generally talk about diverticulitis, we're talking about left-sided. So left-sided, lower abdominal pain is generally what's going on. So, you, you know, down here, into, what's the right side? Right side is appendicitis. Uh, we talk about right-sided abdominal pain with fevers and chills. We generally think of appendicitis. Left-sided abdominal pain with fevers and chills, we generally think about uh, diverticulitis, okay? So if you have uh, progressing abdominal pain, uh, maybe over 24, 48 hours, which is not going to get, not going away, getting worse, fevers and chills, you should probably go see somebody, okay? If it's real bad, you should see somebody less than, in less than 24 hours. So that's generally the um, what, what folks feel. You can have some nausea and vomiting. You can have diarrhea. You can have constipation. Now, let me mention real quick, why do we get these? And it is essentially because the colon is having a lot of pressure, okay? So as you can imagine, uh, the colon is kind of like uh, a muscular tube and it squeezes along the way like this, right? It squeezes everything down. So if the squeeze, you generate too much pressure in the colon, then you can have, that's just like the, the weakening of the, the inner tube, the wall, there's certain parts of the uh, colon where the wall is a little bit weaker and that's where you have those little out pouching things. Uh, and so, um, yeah, I lost my train of thought. What was I thinking? Oh, symptoms. Uh, so fevers, chills, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, either one. Um, uh, physical exam. We want to talk about physical, physical exam. Uh, same thing when you go to the doctor and they press on your belly. And if they press over here and it doesn't hurt and it's the right side and then they press over here and you're like, oh, that hurts then it may be some diverticulitis, it may be a microperforation. If they push over here and it hurts over here, then that may be a gross rupture, that's what we call peritonitis, and that's because the inside of the abdominal wall, the lining, is really, really angry, and no matter where you push, it hurts over here, <laughs> okay? So that's the basically a physical exam for that. Um, the uh, laboratory values generally uh, patients have an elevated white blood cell count, and that is because the white blood cells are trying to fight some sort of infection, and you have a rise in white blood cells uh, in the blood, and so your doctor will probably get you that. And then uh, typically it doesn't affect the blood, so like your hemoglobin or your hematocrit doesn't really get affected. However, if you have a, a right-sided diverticulitis, or di excuse me, a right-sided diverticulum over here, those often bleed more than they get infected. And so uh, sometimes if you have gross um, blood from the rectum, then you will, may have a diverticulum that is bleeding. Uh, x-rays, I gotta let me cheat my cheat sheet here. So uh, x-rays, uh, typically how it's diagnosed is if you have abdominal pain and you go see your uh, family physician or you go to an emergency department, Generally, you get uh, just an, a plain, what we call plain x-ray. Uh, it looks from back to front, and you see the, the bones and all that stuff. You may see some gas, uh, but you don't see really the diverticulum or the, the infection so much. But the CAT scan is much better for that, so you probably get a CAT scan if you see nothing on the 
initial x-ray, you get a CAT scan, and that can show you the diverticulum. That's about the best way to, um, I don't say, you probably will see diverticulum if you don't have an infection. If you do have an infection, that's the best way to see it, uh, diverticulitis, and also the abscess, which we talked about. And then treatment. Um, so there's a few ways we can treat this depending on what is going on. So if it's a micro perforation and we don't think there's spillage of stool into the abdomen and there's not an abscess and it's not gross spillage, then we can generally treat those with antibiotics. Uh, sometimes you need a little bit of IV antibiotics. Say like you stay in the hospital for 24 hours, you get the IV antibiotics, and then you feel much better the next day and you go home and you stay on um, oral antibiotics for about uh, 8, to, 8 to 14 days depending on your um, severity. If you have an abscess, so that's a little different, um, what will you do? Depending on how big the abscess is, if it's over two centimeters, you may stick, well, maybe I shouldn't say stick, but you put a needle, you place a needle gently into the abscess. Okay, this is done under uh, radiologic guidance. So CT, you get a CAT scan or an ultrasound, and you can put a needle through the skin after you numb the skin into the abscess and suck out the pus, basically. That's not a fancy way of saying it, but that's what you do. And you can get that, and sometimes you leave a drain, like a tube, in that cavity, and sometimes you can suck out the pus and you don't need to leave a drain. And so you'd also get antibiotics for that, depending on how big the abscess is, depending on um, where it's located and all that stuff. You can have that done, and you may have um, antibiotics for two weeks to six weeks, depending on the severity. So then lastly is the surgical treatment. So after you have an abscess or you have diverticulitis, if you have a little tiny diverticulitis where, you know, it's a micro perforation, you get, a, you get some antibiotics, it goes away, you feel good, it happens again. It, when you start have, having it happen more than once, then you start thinking about, well, maybe you need that portion of the colon removed because if it perforates, Right here now. Here's the trick. Now listen to this. If it perforates and you have gross contamination of stool in the abdomen, you may need an emergent surgery with uh, re a removal of the that portion of the colon and a colostomy bag. Right, you know where you have the bag where you poop into um, out of your skin into the bag. Bad news. Nobody wants that. So that's the big deal about diverticulitis. If you have a recurrent. Uh, recurrently, if you have an emergency surgery for it, you may need um, a colostomy bag. Now, we're definitely, uh, surgeons in general are moving more towards not doing the bag so much and trying not to do that, but if it's grossly infected, there's lots of poop everywhere, if you do that and you close it all up, you, you could have a bad infection. So, um, depending on the situation, you may end up with that, you may not, but that's the bad stuff. Okay. Um, so, and then, uh, so that, that was kind of like the emergency portion, right? If you have, have an emergency, um, if you have the gross rupture, you get real sick, right? You go in the hospital, you have emergency surgery. On the elective side, say you get diverticulitis and it's a micro perforation, so you get that a couple times, uh, your surgeon and or doctor may recommend you have that portion of the colon out. And I'm going to draw this portion right here, which is generally the sigmoid portion, sigmoid colon, right here with the, the little S here, the little S turn, that's a sigmoid uh, portion. So you get the portion of the colon and when your surgeon goes in there, they look for all these diverticula and they say, okay, well, there's no diverticula about right here, let's go here. And so generally that's about the sigmoid colon and then you come down here and they say, okay, there's no diverticula here, this looks pretty good stuff. Down here, we'll leave that, we'll take this portion out. And then if you have an elective, an elective surgery, you can put these back together and hook you back up the same surgery and you don't have to have a colostomy bag. So that's a good deal. So, all right, that is my spiel on diverticulitis. I hope you like that. I hope it makes a little bit more sense. I hope it helps you to avoid the colostomy bag because nobody likes that. And uh, yeah, you know where to find me, drbuckparker.com. I will see you later.